Good morgen. Oh, bist du? Today, I'm bringing you a lecture. I mean, uh, an arty. I, I mean, an Aoshida. Yes, that's the one. Aoshida E20. It's all the same company, sister company. Um, easy. Even on the back of the box, it's, it's lead sure. So, uh, and I don't really care. I think this is another one you should put on your radar. This is a two dynamic driver. And why I bought this one, my radar went up. Because, um, br brilliant. The element of B is on my radar. I love the tonality of beryllium coated drivers. The and I'm thankful they're making a comeback. <clears throat> and what I like about them is their tonality. I like their speediness, and I love the way they can put a little bit more into the mid bass and not sound bloated or muck up any vocals. Now, that being said, I also have a special guest uh, that's gonna make an appearance later as a comparison. I did a video for it recently, the Binary Acoustics Chopin, and I will tell you why. So, this little bad boy, um, also, um, just looking at their graph action, um, again, very, very bang on to what the back of the box shows. So um, elevated sub bass, very flat in the middle, and uh, pin again, uh, fairly gentle rise, which is following the Harman curve to it, almost to a T. Now, before you go, oh, another Harman tuned IAM. There's a reason why companies tune to the Harman target, and that's because it appeals to the masses. Now, I think in 2023, there was a giant buzzword that chi fi companies were using, and it was called Harman tuned. And it got overused and overplayed, and um, and I don't think it means what they think it means. I um, I think, or the, the way they're trying to use it. Uh, not that they're trying to follow a target curve, because it clearly isn't, like the KZ saying Harman for the caster blaster. No, not even close. But I think uh, it's like when the Chai Fi says uh, female poison which is basically a more energetic top end. So that kind of translates to a more energetic top end where they're using the buzzword of Harman tuned, I think more as a, uh, a descriptor for something that would appeal to the masses. Now, that being said, this bad boy is very much uh, tuned towards Harman. Now, with Harman tuning, um, you do get a seriously elevated sub bass, very flat across the middle. Pin again uh, rises uh, nicely, uh, plateaus off, and uh, somewhere around 8K you have a drop off. Now this, and I'll pull up a graph later, follows it um, very, very closely. A little bit less energy in the sub bass, which uh, plays into this tuning. Um, so I'll tell you straight up off the bat, the Aoshida E20 is one of the nicest Harman, true Harman tuned IMs I've had the pleasure of listening to. And I think that has to do with the quality of the two drivers that are inside, the 10 millimeter beryllium and the eight millimeter uh, something or other driver. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, and I did look this up, actually. So I was doing my research. Uh, DLC, thank you very much. Diamond-like carbon. So again, they're choosing two kind of um, hybrid um, drivers that uh, would work more on the speedy side um, versus, and, and, it'll, and it plays into the tuning. And let's, um, so it comes in, let's talk about uh, the E20 for a second. 
Um, I got mine in a gold version. Um, is it the most beautiful gold? No, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like subdued, but I really liked it with the red grill inserts underneath. And we'll talk about that too, because they're not just decorative. So, uh, their shell is a 3D printed something. Um, and I can't tell what it is, if it's a resin or a thermal plastic, or I'm not sure what it is to tell you the truth, but it's not, it's, it's warm to the touch. So it's not metallic. And I don't think it's resin to tell you the truth. It, it's more of something else. Um, it could be a powder bed printed shell or some kind of thermoplastic. Um, nice grill <clears throat> underneath. Yeah, there we go. Um, and you don't see any ventings anywhere on the shell except for the top, which happens to be a semi-open back because when you block the... Um, when you block the nozzle, you can actually hear some music from the back of the driver. So that kind of tells me that in fact, it is a true semi-open design. On mine, um, as a, on a suggestion from, uh, I used the Divinis uh, tips. And I just got these in from Hi-Fi Go, and I'm liking what they do. Um, it was a great suggestion, so thank you. Um, and what changes uh, the tonality of these ones, these tips, and <clears throat> the JVC Spiral Dot FX Tens that I truly love, is it just kind of smooths out the upper vocals, and it does that quite well. The Cables that come with it are like a very let sure 3.5 um, cable. It's the same exact cable that came with the R1, RT, RTR1, uh, um, which I like uh, as well. Um, but in my journey, uh, you know that I love playing with cables and tips and sources and to, to squeeze out the best I think um, I can get out of this I am and then share my impressions. I want to give it its best, right? Best foot forward uh, or cable or tips in this case or source. Uh, I put uh, this bad boy on one of my absolute uh, favorite cables. Um, it's an XINHS cable that has gold and SPC. I, the gold element, which is quite um, literal in this one, uh, there's a bunch of it, uh, which then affects this cable for me. If I want to put something, uh, any IM I put on this cable, and I'll put the link in the description, I find it thickens up the mid-range. So for uh, IMs that you find a little bit airy or a bit thin, this will thicken up. Any cable that has some gold elements uh, in it, um, again, I tried the pen on vocal cable. Too much of a good thing is not a good thing, uh, but it certainly changed it. Uh, very nice. I loved it with this cable. Anyway, enough about the stupid cables. Uh, shell shape, again, um, a couple things that stand out for me uh, and lately, and maybe I'm just picky, but um, again, I love the shell shape uh, with this, and it's very much like the RT R1. Uh, it just has a small little wing on it, um, fairly shallow, uh, but when it goes in, for me, it just uh, buries into my ear, makes it extremely comfortable, and with those Divinis tips, uh, I get some pretty amazing isolation, even with the open back. So... Um, let's talk about sound for these guys. So 
As I mentioned, it is a Harman tuned IM, but I think it's done perfectly in Harman. Um, what happens when you flatten that out in the bottom of that? And I, here's the graph, right? So, and then, so you do get with this IM, um, you get, I think the, what makes this IM and the sound of this, uh, E20 pop is the high end, uh, exaggerated in a way that is very smooth. So even if you're treble sensitive, like myself, you will have no issues. So kind of an interesting one. This is an IM that is in this Harman tuned. It does, it will appeal to the masses and honestly will. It's not an all rounder, uh, but this is the kind of treble that people who are treble sensitive like me, who want a little bit, who don't want uh, as to listen to a little bit darker IM or we, or a warmer I am. We're getting uh, lots of treble information, details, and high end without the that it pushes our envelope of a uh, happy place in a very good way. And I really the thing that stood out for me on the E twenty was the treble and the extension, uh, the air, the details. Um, it's still perfect for treble sensitive people but even people who like a lot of trouble i think will like this i am as well like i said it'll probably appeal to the masses um definitely not a perfect or my ideal tuning um and i'll tell you a little bit why uh sometimes when i say that it's just being politically correct telling you that it's shit in this case it isn't uh, it's just that what I like a little bit more. Okay, let's go. Uh, electric guitar, they sound wicked. Uh, Joe Satriani, like, come on. Um, right? <laughs> Super clean mids. Violin, uh, Tina Gao uh, with her electric rock and her violin was electric. I loved it. Uh, with the nice gentle pin again where it doesn't go mm, like way up real fast it, it doesn't make the well let's talk about the mids so the upper mids and the energetic tuning that the e20 has is the, what i thought what went through my brain was wow this is like a breath of fresh air from warmer thicker tunings right so um think pen on dome uh, sound rhyme, ISN, that kind of uh, tuning where the house sound is lush, it's organic, and it's, it's extremely on the musical side. Um, and again, some people love that, some people don't. Uh, and this is like a, a bit of a, a refresher, a, a breath of fresh air. It's a bit different. Um, and again, the reason they tune for Harman, I guess a lot of people are going to like this. Uh, all those studies say this is what people want. They want more bass and they want uh, lots of still high-end energy, but not too bright. And that's, it hits. Let's go from the bottom, work our way up, frequency response-wise. Bass uh, is nice, very nice. Uh, and again, thank you to that 10 millimeter beryllium coated driver. Really, really um the driver is nice. And drivers and driver quality and tuning effect equals tonality wise. How natural does it sound? Uh, and to me, this IM sounds mostly natural. Bass is really nice. And because it, uh, but it kind of drops off. So, you know, somewhere around 80 to uh, 110 hertz. It kind of really does kind of fall off and really flattens out. I think what really helps here is there's a, a little bit of a bump, a three, kind of a two and a half, three dB bump around 300 hertz. And I think that's the absolute saving grace of this IM where it adds a, that little bump, adds a little bit of mid bass uh, where it makes bass guitars, cello sound very, very nice. And it adds just enough uh, weight to male vocals to make them sound almost perfect. 
Now, um, the problem with Harmon stuff uh, is like songs and from Pancho Sanchez, where the majority of the music is um, his unique drum. And though it has weight, attack, and decay in the bass, it's missing more of the note weight in the mid bass to make his drum the way I know it should sound. If you didn't know better or didn't know that music, you would think that it's the replay is sounding fantastic. And again, it did sound really good, but for my for for uh, to being true to the source, uh, it's missing some of that mid bass energy, for sure. Uh, and I and it was noticeable uh, in that. So to make it tonally correct uh, replay, it would have more mid bass energy, and the drums would sound deeper, thicker, bigger. Really, um, Hawkman Kim with Chinese a poem of Chinese drum. Again, you could hear it with all the different uh, drum sounds. Again, they sounded a bit thin in the drums. Uh, with it's not as much attack uh, and and weight as uh, I would like to see, but on the other end of the scale, in the in the mids and uh, instrumental where you have trumpets, where you have violin, where you have strings, they sound great, extremely clear and clean, and uh, it's it's so I kind of forgive the E twenty for the bottom end because the top end is so very, very nice. And again, I don't wanna have every single I am in my collection that sounds the same. And this one sounds different in a great way. What happens to micro and macro details? Well, with this kind of uh, Harman tune, you actually get quite a bit because it has lots of energy and excitement down below and energy and excitement up top. So quiet passages come across nicely when boom hits it's like yeah nice perfect that's what happens and I think it's great now um, how do the mids play overall in this tuning well mids play kind of neutral if not um, slightly recessed into the mix there's definitely an emphasis on the bass and there's definitely an emphasis on the highs. It's very clean kind of sound, uh, again, but vocals are, in vocal wise, maybe a bit recessed, but if you had the instrumental uh, in there, if you're listening to a non-vocal track and, and, and like rock, it really brings it to life. Like Joe Satriani on this set, with the electric guitar and the excitement uh, is fantastic, uh, really is. Uh, mid bass, you like how I said that? That was that was very emotional. He's eh? like mid bass. <laughs> uh, it's just if I had a wish list, and again, why am I asking for something to have more mid bass when I keep when I just said that I don't want every set to sound the same? Well, if I tune this set. I would just add a bit more mid bass in there. That's the only thing I would do to change this I am to my perfect tuning. Um, normally I like a little bit uh, relaxed in the high end, but I find the the top end of this thing very addicting. It really is. I, I absolutely freaking dialed this thing up last night um, very loud. Uh, because I was enjoying the music so much and um, and it was a cool replay now I will say one thing about the E20 having different sources for me is a I feel very blessed to be able to do that and to share with you my um, impressions on what I heard with different sources now if you had a very resolving source and, uh, and your only thing that you had was uh, an ESS DAC, you're gonna hear more details. You're gonna hear more air and separation. It's gonna bring out all the nuances. And you'll, again, you'll probably love the stock cable and uh, you'll be good to go. 
for me as I'm putting a cable on and tips on to warm it up a little bit, thicken up the mids. Um, by the way, this cable looks exactly like the gold faceplate. Like this cable is not coming off. In fact, when it's going on tour, it's going with this cable. Um, and I'll take some pretty pictures to show you. Um, it's worth like one million dollars or more put it on a warmer source that's my point and if you do so um, I think it kind of mitigates a little bit of that upper mids uh, you know um, and it warms it up just a little bit just a little bit right uh, anytime you change your sources a big one tips are a huge one uh, and cable is a little one um, but the combination together, uh, teeny little steps, adds up to something quite musical and lovely. And uh, so I loved it on the Shanling uh, M8, a little bit warmer source with the uh, AKM 4499. And I really loved it uh, on my Gishelli E2 stack with the 4499. Um, and the uh, E2 amp. Um, that's really warm um, and smooth. And I could listen to this for days on end. Um, really, really lovely combination. And I hope uh, if you pick up this set uh, and you have a warmer source, try it with that. See what you think. Okay, last part of uh, the Aoshida E20 and I did mention there was going to be a special guest well this special guest happens to be the binary acoustics Chopin so I first started listening uh, to this set um, and I and I was really digging it like really um, I still do obviously <laughs> and then I pulled up a graph and um, and I just happened to remember that the Chopin kind of graphed very similar. And so then I put the two side by side. Here they are. And I went, damn, they have a very, very similar tuning. Um, without that 300 kilohertz bass or mid mid range bump, and it looks like a whole lot more energy past, you know, three four five six seven eight k but three or four db even almost five db but they the curves they they almost the same except for more energy and then you also look at um the bottom end right where the chopin just really falls off like uh, after 50 hertz it's it right um and what I said about this one, that it didn't sound natural in the vocals. It sounds plasticky. And it had, the E20 had me rethinking my impressions of the Chopin because everyone else is like, oh, this thing is the world's greatest, you know, I am. And, I, and I'm like, I don't like it. There's something unnatural about it. And the fitment is probably, again, I'm not going to be the only one, but the, the, the shell shape and the way um, it's designed is not helping it at all. Even if you could get them as deep as you can get them. Again, I tried uh, with the Duno s and tips and put them right to my brain, and it didn't affect the my impressions at all. But what happened with the E20? And the aing being so it had me thinking did I get my impressions wrong I, and I don't normally question myself once I I'm I don't change my opinion um, but what had me going was well shit they have a similar tuning did I get my impressions wrong and then I just didn't just do an a and B I mean this is what 250 bucks this is 50 bucks Right, so hybrid DD and BAs and two dynamic drivers, and I'll tell you that 
this sounds wrong, this sounds right. And the top end also, probably because it has less bass in the Chopin, you hear more highs. And because this one is more balanced and it has more energy in the sub and more energy in the mids and mid bass, and still more of the high frequencies, it balances off even better. Like it's a better, more balanced set than the Chopin. But tonality wise, how natural does it sound? It doesn't sound plasticky at all. It sounds natural, uh, even with that harmonish tuning, where this just didn't, um, just didn't get there. There's just something artificial about it. Um, and it's probably has to do with the balanced armatures that they use. And this happens to use a dynamic driver that just happens to have a more natural tonality. So that was my um, observations versus the Chopin. Uh, and somebody asked me, what would you choose if you wanted something alternate from the Chopin? And I said, choose something $200 less and get this. It's tuned very similar, but correct uh, wise. There you go. Anyway, that's enough about the uh, E20. I liked it very much. Harman tuned, um, done in the right way. Musical, um, definitely plays uh, male vocals with all these little twerks. Came out really nicely, but uh, female vocals are wondrous. They really are. Um, you will like it a lot. And uh, that's uh, that's it for this Aoshida slash Letchure slash RT E20. Don't have monk. Till the next time.